Good morning, my dear brother and sister in Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I was glad when they say unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the mighty Savior. Our God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Yes, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Together we pray. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly views and passions of the sinful man, give us grace to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that in all the changes and changes of this world, our hearts may surely they be fixed where lasting joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from Proverbs 31, verse 10 to 20, and verse 30 to 31. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bring her food from afar. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a few and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. 
In her hand, she holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Father, we come before your mighty presence this morning. We want to say thank you for giving us life. We thank you for giving us family. And even this morning, as we continue to look at your creation, we know that, Lord, you have given us family. In our families, we know that we have a mum. Father, we pray that you bless even today. As we think of Mother's Day, Lord, you continue to help us even with the message you speak to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, Happy Mother's Day to all. And I would like to say, in the whole world, everyone has a mum. If you are married, you have two. Now, some have more. They have their own mother, and then they were brought up by another family, and they get married, they have three. And some have adopted mother too. So no matter what, we still have someone whom we call mum or mother. Now, blessed Mother's Day to all mothers. And may God bless each and every one of you. Now, we need to think of our topic for today. What do you see in your mummy? Now, there are many things that we can see in our mother. That's great. But today, we want to look at five things that we see in every mummy. And I want to call every mum Grace today. Just say to your mother, Grace. Now, what are the things that we see in Grace? G-R-A-C-E. So, G, we want to look at God's love. Now, in Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 12, what does it say there? A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So the first thing we see in a Christian mom would be God's love. She has received God's love and believed in God. Now verse 11, let's go back again. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. The first person to trust her before her children can see anything in her is her husband. Now when the children start to grow up, they will see God's love and experience God's love in mom. I have a story of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was six years old and he came back home from school one day. And he said, Mom, this is a note from the teacher. And the mom looked at the note, and the note says, I suggest that your son be taken out of this school as he was too, too stupid to learn. What, my son, too stupid? Now, why was he considered like that? Now, one problem in him was he was deaf. So because of his mother, he was not satisfied. And so he, she changed his school because of his of a love for Edison. Now when Edison grew up and he said, this is my tribute to my mom. I did not have my mother for long, but she cast over me an influence which has lasted all my life the good effects of her early training, I can never lose. If it had not, not been for her appreciation and her faith in me at a critical time in my experience, I should never have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy. 
and with a mother of different mental caliber, I should have turned out badly. But her firmness, her sweetness, her goodness were potent powers to keep me in the right path. So my mother was the making of me. The memory of her will always be a blessing to me. So this is what Edison see in her mother, God's love. And I'm sure every one of us we see God's love in our mom. So that's G. Next is R. What do we see? R. We want to see a biblical character in Hannah of her righteousness. Now verses 13 to 15, she selects woo and flex and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Now, when a person is in Christ, that person is a new creation. So Christian moms are met right with God and sins are forgiven. So we see that biblical example in Hannah. Hannah was married to Elkanah, who loved her and always gave a double portion of food to her because he loved her. But one thing, the Lord has closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival, the second wife of Elkanah, kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. In a deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will be used on his head. When Hannah was praying, Eli looked at her, and Eli said, Stop being drunk. But Hannah replied, Eli, who accused her of being drunk, and Hannah replied, Not so, my Lord. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my grief. Anguish. Verse 14 says, She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. This is a righteous woman. Hannah was a righteous woman. She did not fight. She did not do anything. Now in verse 14, this righteous woman, she can be trusted and is righteous. The husband can trust her. The family can trust her. For she brought food from afar. She is righteous and is very trusted to keep herself right with God. She will not get herself to be involved with any rival by being irresponsible. So she is very responsible for the family and for her marriage. So being righteous, not only that we see in her, what else do we see in a mum? God's love, righteous, and heir. The third thing, what do we see? Always alert. Now, in a way, it's alert in verses 16 to 17. What does it say here? She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. Let's go back to verse 15. 
What other things that she's always alert? She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. So a mom is always a person who is willing to sacrifice. In almost every home, mom will always be the first to get up and also the last to go to bed. Mom, if you agree, say yes. Now, mom remembers every detail that needs to be taken care of for the whole day, for the family, and also for the female servants. She's always alert to the sound of the children's cries. Now, verse 16, another sacrifice she's willing to take. She considers a few and buys it out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. Now, when such a consideration happens, she is willing to do more work and sacrifice and work harder than before. Verse 17, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. Her sacrifices and work are never ending. And she's always ever ready to do all that's need to be done. Now we can see all this, where we can see a Christian mom learn all these things and is willing to sacrifice. Where does she learn it? Number four, we want to look at C. It is in Christ's example. Now verse 19 and 20. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with the fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Now, as children of God, we read the Bible, we pray, and we hear all that God's love has done for us. Especially in John 3, 16, it reminds us that God's love was accomplished at the cross when Jesus stretched out his hands to be nailed on the cross. His hands reach out to us and we need to come to him whenever we can. Verse 20 again. Mums open her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. I always remember when we were young. After every Sunday service, cousins, friends of my sisters and brothers would always come to our house. And I can never hear my dad and my mom complain. All of them were there till evening. Sometimes some parents will come and pick them. Sometimes in the end, my dad has to send them home. So mom opens her arms and extends her hands to all of them. Now Jesus Christ also taught us to do the same as he has done so that we can have eternal life. We have eternal life when we give our lives to the open arms of Jesus and let him meet our needs. So even as we read the Bible daily, we see all his teachings and all that he had done for us. All we need to do is to take up all his example to teach and help many needy people around us. Now Jesus is praying for us and we can pray for others too, especially when people are so in need of prayers now. Moms, dads, lead your family to pray. There are many things that we can pray because Jesus is also praying for us. Christ's example, because of that, we want to look at E. What do we see in a mom? Proverbs 31, verses 30, 31. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honour her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring praise at the city gate. So the fifth thing we see, E, is excellence. So we see Hannah, she has been praying in her heart but the lips were moving. Her voice was not heard. Now Eli thought she was drunk. But Hannah said, 
I am not drunk. Because Eli said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Now Hannah was a lady who was so down, and all she could do was just to pray and promise God that when a son is born, she will dedicate him to the Lord. Yes, indeed, Samuel was born, and he served God. And this mom continued to serve Samuel as well. So she's a woman of excellence. She served God. And today we see a lot of moms serving God in just the same way. So we see G-R-A-C-E. God's love, righteous, always alert, Christ's example, excellence. These are the five things that we see in a mom. Let me conclude with a story. Now, Pastor Lilian Wang, a Chinese evangelist, tore of an incident of his childhood which vividly illustrates the substitutory work of Christ. So on one occasion, he had been very naughty and his mother was with a stick in her hand, called him to her to be punished. But he ran off, taunting his mother and said, le, 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 le. If you can catch me, come. She had little chance of catching her small, lively son due to her own body size. So she stood there and still said, I feel ashamed of myself that I have brought up a boy who is not willing to be disciplined by his own mother when he does wrong. So I must punish myself. And she began to whip her bare arm. This so touched Leland's heart that he ran back to his mother, threw himself into her arms and pleaded with her to stop and not hurt yourself anymore, but punish me. From then on, no further punishment was necessary. So when Pastor Wang continued to grow up, he said the memory of that incident helped him to understand the great love of the Lord Jesus Christ, who willingly took our place on the cross. And each time he looked at his mom's hands and he see another pair of hands that died for him. So what do we see in mom? We see these five things. We see grace. But let's think again. What do we see in Jesus Christ? There are many, many lessons we can see in Jesus Christ. So today in our response song, we want all of us to think at the cross. What do we see? We see amazing grace. So as we put our eyes and our focus on Jesus Christ, let us think of this amazing grace that God has given to us. Let's give ourselves to the Lord in prayer. Father, we give thanks and praise to you for your goodness and your greatness in us. We give thanks and praise to you for your love. And we say thank you, God, because you love us. And even at this time now, we want to say thank you for grace and even more amazing grace in Jesus. Lord, even as we respond to your love at the cross, we pray that you speak to us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's reaffirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, my dear brother and sister in Christ. Now, first of all, I would like to wish all the mothers a very blessed Mother's Day. So may the Lord bless all the mothers with His grace. Now, this morning, we have uh, some of our members who would like to express their gratitude to their mothers. So we have recorded a few of them this morning for each one of us. Mommy, 
。妈妈，我祝你母亲节快乐。Thank you, Mom, for everything. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. 祝妈妈母亲节快乐，祝妈妈身体健康，我的全部都爱你耶。来祝天下的母亲母亲节快乐。然后我想在这里对我妈妈说，谢谢你把我养大成人，然后让我继续的在这里上大学。最后，我也希望大家能够在主的平安里度过这次的疫情。Thank you, Mummy, for taking care of us and always preparing meals for us and listening to our rants every day. Thank you, Mummy, for helping us do our homework and helping us cook food for us. Thank you, Mummy, for always giving us advice and always tolerating us and also helping do the chores and cooking for us. Thank you, Mummy. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. We love you. We love you. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi mom, hi popo, it's me, happy Mother's Day. Mom, you are a blessing to many people, but I am especially grateful for the amazing work you have done being my mom. Thank you for all the laughs, the listening and the unconditional love. And popo, thank you for all the encouragement and always keeping me in your prayers. I miss listening to your childhood stories. Can't wait to see you both, stay healthy. And to all the moms out there, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for your attention to your parents and your parents. I hope you will be able to help you. I hope you will be able to help you. So, Ma, I love you. Ma, I love you. Thank you. Ma, I love you. Okay. Thank you. Ma, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you, all the children. And uh, the second announcement is: uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the donors and uh, for giving blood and save life. Thank you so much for your participation in our blood donation campaign. And the next is: uh, I would like to encourage us to continue. Uh, to subscribe to our Facebook and our Instagram and YouTube uh, channel. So I find out this is one of the uh, best communication uh, to our members, one of the best way to communicate uh, to our member during this time. So I would like to encourage us uh, to, to like our Facebook, to like our uh, YouTube channel, uh, so that you can uh, get more information. So from time to time, I will post some Bible verses or announcement and also uh, even a prayer item for all of us. Now last but not least, our tithe and offering. We like to encourage us to continue to be faithful in our giving. So this morning, we like to encourage you to take out your handphone because we have another way of giving our tithe and offering uh, through a cashless uh, booth. Right? So take out your handphone and scan uh, the barcode and give unto the Lord. Okay, you can continue to do your online banking or you can put your offering in the envelope. So when we meet again uh, in church, when we are allowed to go to church, then you can give your tithe and offering unto the Lord. So let's now prepare our heart uh, to enter into a time of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you to pray for Indonesia of this COVID-19. Guide the President and the Health Authority with your wisdom of knowing how to control the further spread of this virus, bringing peace to the community. Father, we also want to come before you to uphold our Anglican Church, Sumo Hitop Kolabinya, which has been burned down recently. Guide the pastor, Reverend Federine and family to provide an open way of you leading to rebuild the church for the community to worship you. Lord, we commit every need of this church unto your mighty hand and we pray that you continue to lead and guide through your mighty hand. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord's Prayer together. We pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's open our heart to receive the blessing from the Lord. May the peace of God be past us all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brother and sister in Christ, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen. So